Ooh. Holy smokes. Was that a fan what? That was a complete fan miss, Tiger. That club face was so open at the top, and then he couldn't release it through. Wow. Nick Faldo's 72nd hole critique of Tiger Woods at the 2005 Buick Invitational, which, by the way, Tiger won, is believed to have irked Tiger. And guess what? The two greats are in the same group on Thursday. We really don't talk much. You don't talk much? Mm -mm. Will you be talking on Thursday and Friday? Uh, I've only played with them two times since I've been a pro, and um, there wasn't a whole lot of talking there either. So does that mean you'll shake hands on the first tee and on the 18th three and that will be it? I don't know. I really don't know. I, it's up to him because I know I'm, I'll be in, in, my, in my world trying to compete and try and win the championship, and I'm sure he'll probably do the same thing. And if he wants to talk, what will you be your reaction? Surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping I can bump into Tiger and... and uh, sort things out before we get to the first tee, before there's any, before the immediate try and create any more dramas out of it. Yeah, it's too much in my book. I'll bring my, uh, I'll bring my lipstick in case he wants to kiss me, and I'll bring my boxing gloves in case he wants to hit me. <laughs> so, or anything in between. <laughs> I don't, no, I can't imagine that it'd be anything other than sporting, and off we go and have a good day, chaps. Uh, because he's been paired alongside Nick Faldo. Now, apparently, the two don't get along too well. Have you spoken to Tiger since the, uh, well, since the famous incident when you dissected his swing? Uh, no. I'm very surprised that they um, paired me with Tiger. We really don't talk much. I'll be in, in, my, in my world trying to compete and try and win the championship. It's up to him. Really? All right, well, I'll, I shall shock him then and, 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 be a, and babble away all day. Really? <laughs> we shall see. I can't imagine how anyone would ever fall out with Nick Faldo. Can you, Mark? No idea, and I think in this case he's, uh, <laughs> I think he's right in this case. Um, you know, he was uh, working for TV company. He, he's there to give his analysis and opinion, something that, uh, you know, his track record entitles him mm. to do. Uh, he was simply giving his opinion to Tiger's swing, so I, I don't know what the fuss is about. You know, if Tiger just ignored it, the whole thing's gone and disappeared. Mm. I don't think anyone's above uh, comment. And yes, we're going to find the golden boy there, Doogie Donnelly. Be sure Thank to have you, something Peter. interesting to uh, us. Just about uh, five minutes or so ago, there's a real buzz around the, the range here across the road from Royal Liverpool. It's a local municipal course we're actually using for the range this week. Nick Faldo walked onto the, onto the range, started hitting shots, and then just about 60 seconds later, arrived playing partner Tiger Woods. Now, of course, it's been one of the stories ahead of uh, the opening day here that these two aren't speaking after uh, Tiger had his swing criticised by Nick Faldo in his American television commentary. But they did make up yesterday. They shook hands, but uh, as luck would have it, and by the greatest of ironies, they found themselves alongside each other in the range. It doesn't necessarily work that way. It's purely coincidence. Uh, they didn't speak. There was no acknowledgement at all. Nick was already into his routine. And then I'm not sure whether this was entirely mischievous or not, but then each was given the other's brand of ball, all the players are given their own manufacturer's balls to practice with and each was given the other, so I'm not sure whether that was a little bit of a wind-up or not, but they've both settled now into their pre-shot routine uh, Tiger Woods, of course, playing in his 12th Open Championship, he's already won twice, he's the defending champion after his win at St Andrews last week, Nick playing 30 years after his Open debut this is his 31st Open, he's a three-time winner, of course, they're both very focused they don't say a great deal on the golf course they're certainly not speaking at the moment, but they're both into their routine, and looking forward to teeing off in about 45 minutes from now. Thank you, Dougley. Yeah, I think a bit of a storm in the teacup, I think. It makes a good story. I don't think either gives a toss one way or the other. There it is, Tiger Woods, 65, coupled with a round of 67 yesterday, 12 under par, and leading the 135th Open Championship. Well, 
quite a round of golf, particularly when you look at his one over after three holes, eventually round in 65, played his last 15 in eight under. Uh, I said, since you're not using your driver, I said, could Matthew have it? <laughs> so, he's only, he's only hit it once in two days, so uh, but he seems to know what he's doing. He's got a good game plan. Still going on in the papers this morning. It's, they're still trying to mix it up a little bit. Have you yeah. kissed and made up? Well, yeah, yeah. He was he was uh, upset at some of my comments I made over a year, 18 months ago, which is surprising. He sort of hung on to him. But you know, did, we did talk... you feel at the time that perhaps the comments were too strong yourself or not? You know, I was. Something happened in a in a in a heated situation like that, 18th hole, and I, all, you know, he was he was. I can comment on what happens on the golf show, yeah. you know, no problem with that. He, I think he was a little upset that I didn't uh, understand what he was working on in his golf swing, that sort of thing. So that was fine. We had a good chat about it. I, I've got, uh, you know, I know what he, he would like me to do and what have you. And so uh, uh, after that, everything was fine. Everything was great. Uh, you addressed the issue? Did you go up and say, well, you know, are we okay now? Or? Yeah, he was walking to the range on uh, Wednesday afternoon. And I heard from the bookies that uh, they were offering 25 to 1 that if you chin me. Yeah. So I said, wait, we can cut a deal with you. I said, it's 25 to 1 if you, you get me on the first tee. And typical target said, I'll put 2 million on it. So I was like, well, that'll do nicely. I thought, well, if I can get a, just a 5% of that, yeah. I'd be more than I'm going to make. But don't hit open. me too hard. Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah can you just... Yeah. just just crease the makeup. Yeah. And after two days playing together, you, I mean, you must have talked as, as oh, you played. Oh, yeah, it was absolutely great, absolutely great. He, we, we had a great, you know, I'd let him get on with it. Now, I, obviously, he's, he's deep in concentration, as I would have been in, you know, and, that, you know, and I, we just chatted about bits and bobs, talked about the upcoming seeds, you know, this, this new uh, FedEx Cup, um, uh, all sorts of things, his thoughts on Ryder Cup. Yeah, we had a good, 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 good chin wag. Good chin work, but no, no punches on the, on, luckily, on the chin. Luckily, he's, he's looking finely tuned. I wouldn't yeah. like him to swing one at me. <laughs> he's still, uh, he won't mind me saying this, I'm sure, still struggling, <laughs> with, bank still on struggling with, uh, obviously, the, the, the woods. You know, yeah. the three wood and a driver. I mean, he used the driver once on Thursday, and that was on 60, and that actually was the wrong club. He didn't even need that one, didn't yeah. think about using it. That's what I got the good laugh out of him on 18. As he walked off, I said, if you're not using your driver, I said, can Matthew have it? You know, for my son who was headed. <laughs> so, 